My goal in this video is to try and teach you NumPy in like 12 minutes. Now, what is NumPy? NumPy really stands for numerical Python. And we use this for numerical operations in Python. I'm gonna break this down for you guys and I'm gonna show you nine of the most useful tactics we use NumPy for and how you can implement it in your code today. Welcome to the video. All right, guys, time to rapid fire off the most useful NumPy operations. Now, I'm just doing this in VS Code. A, a better alternative for you could be Jupyter Notebooks. This works really good with Jupyter. So if you're familiar with that, if you want to fire that up, all of this is going to work really well there. I'm just doing this in VS Code. Now, I already have the code written out. We're going to go through everything. I'm going to break it down and we're going to talk about it. Now, NumPy stands for numerical Python. And what it really allows us to do is create arrays because it's much more memory efficient and it has built-in mathematical operations and for any type of numerical computations NumPy is going to excel much better than Python so if you think of data analytics or machine learning this is really where that comes in now I can create arrays arrays are just lists but they're in NumPy so just think about that I can create an array of all zeros by using the zeros function or an array of ones by using the ones function. Inside, I'm just putting how many elements do I want to be in this array. Now, if I print this off, we are going to see two arrays lists printed off, but it's going to look very different. You can see here I have my lists printed off, but what is this data? Well, all of these are the elements in the array, but NumPy automatically makes it a float, right? Just to prove that, if I go type here, let's just say type, and I'm going to index, let's just get the first element here, and we're gonna run that again. We are gonna see type of float. Right, right there we go. In the ones that contains floats. And so just know that any data we're putting into this array is automatically going to be a float. Very cool, right? So those are two basic ways to create zeros or ones arrays. We then have what we call a range. This works very similar to Python's range function, but it creates spaced values evenly, starting from zero, going to 10 with a step of two. This is pretty much just a range, but this time we're actually creating the NumPy array. Right here you go. Here's my list, here's my array, zero to eight. So very similar to range. The last one we're gonna have here is what we call lin space, line space. And this kind of works similarly to range, but we're starting at zero, we're going to one. And I want this list to have five elements in it. So how you can view this is like, one divided by five, and each step is going to be an element in the array. If I run that, you can see it starts at 0, 0 0.25, 0.5, 0.751. Altogether, these are five elements in the array. This works really good for plotting data or creating smooth curves in our data. So really, all set and done, okay, we now have one, two, three, four different quick ways to create arrays in NumPy. You can do zeros and ones, very basic. We can use range to create a range and give it a step of our data, or we can use lin space to actually give it evenly spaced values. I start at zero, we go to one, and there's gonna be five in there. Very cool. Now, on to the next part. I've introduced how to make arrays, but really we have array shapes and reshaping. Now, Python is really just a 1D list. If we make a list in Python, it's pretty much one dimensional, unless you nest lists inside of that. Okay, so really at this form, we just have a basic 1D array. Now, as you start to progress into machine learning and deep learning, these networks, these models are going to take 3D arrays. So how we convert this 1D array into 2D or 3D is we use what we call reshape. Real quick, guys, if you're getting value in today's video, hit that like button, drop a comment, and subscribe. And if you guys are in a location that you can hype this video, that's a new feature, I think, hit the hype button, help out the video. Thank you guys so much for your support. The first link in the description, that's my Python masterclass. I'm not gonna talk too much about it. Check it out if you want to. The other links down there are for you guys. Enough said, back to NumPy. 
And this changes the dimensions without changing the data. If we did this in Python, you would need nested loops, you'd have to restructure the list, but this is so much faster. What this is saying is I'm saying three rows and four columns is what this is gonna be output to. So very quickly here, if I just turn in the first two, I'm gonna run the original array and then the reshape. You can see here that the original array up top is just 1D. It's just like a list, right? We reshape it to 2D. Now it's lists in the outer list. This is a 2D array, right? There are three rows and there are four columns. You can see that each inner list is a row. If we take it a step up now, we have our 3D reshaping. This time I'm saying there are two layers, two rows and three columns, right? This is gonna be working for things now in the deep learning sphere, right? Machine learning, here we go. Here's our reshape to 3D. You can see now there's two layers. I have layer one, I have layer two. Within each layer, we have two rows and we have three columns. So really, all set and done in NumPy, this allows you to reshape the data, um, changing your dimensions of the data without actually changing the data itself. This is how we can use reshape. Going down now, we have indexing and slicing. Now, this pretty much works the same in Python, right? In Python, if you have a list called x, for example, I could start at four and go up until not including 10, right? That works for. If you wanted to reverse the order of something or go backwards, I could say my start is here, my stop is here, we're going negative one. Now in NumPy, it pretty much works the same way. We're treating this array as a list. That's how you can think about it, okay? But it is an array. And you can see here that this is really a 2D array because we have our outer one with inner lists. If we wanna get the first row in the array, we take the array and we index the first row, whoops, which is gonna be one, two, three, four, the first column, now what NumPy does is it uses commas to actually splice here. And this is called comma splicing for multiple dimensional indexing. We have the row and we have the column, right? This is gonna take us the first column. And then your element at row one, column two, right? Row, column. When we run this, the indexing is roughly the same here. Okay, and you can see here that I have my first row, which we got is just one, two, three, four, my first inner array. The first column is one, five, nine. That is how we got from the row, and then we got from the column. It's going through each of those. And then the element at row one and column two, row, column, which is number seven. So how did we do that? Row one, zero, one, two, number seven. Okay, so indexing roughly works the same. Just remember, it's gonna be comma notation, which is really your row and then your column to actually access those elements. Okay, going down. Very quickly, I thought I would touch on some mathematical operations. Okay, if I have an array, I can get the square root just by using the square root function or the exponential just by using exp. Yes, this can be done in Python, but this is faster as we're doing numerical computations. All the other mathematical functions in NumPy are going to work the same. You can add numbers, multiply numbers, all of that is the same, okay? Um, and you can still do that. If we're trying to find the square roots and the exponentials are raising to a power, right? This are the two functions that we're going to use for just faster computations. Now, these do output a new array of that data. If we get the square root, square root of these numbers, you can see it's outputting a new array of data. Same with exponential, okay? And so anytime we're mutating this, we're really creating new arrays. Great. So we've covered basic mathematics. It can do the same thing, okay? The same thing with statistical functions here, right? Now you could do this right with pandas, for example, but a lot of times I'm not trying to like 
load in pandas when I'm trying to do these computations, unless you're doing data analytic work, it doesn't quite make sense. Okay. So inside pandas, if you're familiar with pandas, there is a describe function and describe gives you back all the statistical data um, about your data. And it really includes all of this. It includes the mean, the standard deviation, min, max, and median. Right, but we can do that faster with NumPy. And that's what's happening here because NumPy has all these built-in functions. Now, the one thing we are doing is I'm creating random data using this function called normal. And what normal is, is it's just gonna create a thousand rows of data, or it's gonna create an array with a thousand elements. And I'm just giving it a mean of zero and a variance, or I should say standard deviation of one, is all that's kind of happening here. So when we run this now, I'm gonna have this huge array of data, a thousand elements, and I can now call mean. What is the mean of all that data? Uh, what's the standard deviation, the lowest number, maximum, the median? And you can see here the output of all that data. So NumPy makes this very, very fast for us, okay? Great. Drop any questions that you guys have, right? We're going through these trying to showcase how NumPy is useful. Now, this is a feature I really, really do like. This is known as Boolean indexing. Um, if you've ever worked, again, with Pandas, we apply data filters onto the data. And I think this is a really cool feature. If I create an array here, I can now create a condition. Right, I'm basically creating a new array, hot days, and I'm saying anywhere where temperatures is over 20, I want those values to be in this new array. The same thing with cold days. This is just a Boolean expression. This must be true for the element to go inside here. And what this really saves for is because in Python, you would have to create either a list comprehension or some other structure to do this with conditional statements. That's really slow, that's bogged down. Just by doing this, what we call Boolean indexing, I can filter data in NumPy, and I'm actually creating two new uh, arrays that you can see right here. Hot days contains now all the values over 20, and cold days only contains one element because that is the only temperature under the threshold that we gave it. A really fast way here to filter out our data. So imagine we're working with huge data sets. This is a great option for that. Okay, now going down here, we have what we call broadcasting. Broadcasting is really when we expand on an existing array. Now an array is just a list for all intents and purposes, okay? And a matrix is really a 2D array, a 3D array. I have one matrix that you can see here. It's a nested list. It's an array that has arrays in it. And then we have a single array. Now what broadcasting is, is it allows you to actually expand arrays to their compatible shapes. Right, because if you notice here, I'm gonna be adding in a type that doesn't really match with these two. And by broadcasting this, it's automatically gonna add the vector to each row of the matrix. So what do we expect to happen here? If you're unfamiliar with this, you can kind of think of them being merged together or added together. You can see here I have one, two, three, 10, 20, 30. Now I have 11, 22, 33. We're pretty much adding these numbers together in each part of the matrix. We're expanding on that. And this is one of the most powerful features of NumPy is I can add this vector into my array and it automatically reshapes that data for us without losing any of its value or anything we need going further. Okay, so broadcasting, really useful for us, right? Random numbers, we have this in Python. Okay, but for generating random data, um, there are more random number distributions available in NumPy, and we can generate arrays of random numbers on the spot without needing uh, comprehension in Python, without needing a for loop. This really does it all for you. We still have random, okay? We still have random. This time random is actually gonna give us a number between zero and five as a decimal. We still have choice, okay? 
And what I'm doing up here is we're accessing the random module in NumPy and we're saying seed. This is for reproducible results, okay? Results that I wanna to continue to reproduce. Now, what do you expect when you run these? Pretty much the same thing we're gonna get with random, okay? You can see here that I now have a list of random integers, there's five. I have a list of random floats between those and we have a list of random choices, okay, in that order. So super straightforward. It is just gonna compile faster. It's gonna work better faster when we're working with random numbers. We should be implementing NumPy. Now for the last tip here is array concatenation. What am I even saying? Concatenation, really just combining data. When I get talking so fast, words come out, okay? We have two simple arrays, right? And all we're doing here is I'm utilizing three different NumPy functions. We have concatenate, combine, okay? We're just merging the two together horizontally. We can stack the arrays vertically or we can stack the arrays horizontally. Now this is gonna look different based on the needs of our data. So really, boiling down to it, you can see we're just merging it. If I'm doing concatenate, I'm just adding two arrays. Stacking vertically, we are literally making a 2D matrix. And then also horizontally, this function's pretty much the same as when we merge the data sets. We concatenate between them, okay? Um, but this is a side-by-side -side 2D structure. This is still a 1D structure. Guys, those are some of the most useful NumPy operations. And if you thought any of them were helpful, hit that like button and drop a comment. Did I miss anything? If I did, let me know. And what did you find helpful from this video? And that's a wrap. That is, <clears throat> jeez, my God. <clears throat> okay, hello, testing. All right. Guys, that's a wrap on this video for Numerical Python. I hope you guys got value in this video. This was a lot of fun. I've used NumPy before in my content, but never just a video dedicated to it. But I hope you can see why it's so useful and how we can now use that. Any type of numerical calculations or work you're doing, it's gonna speed up your flow immensely. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Okay, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Hit that like button, hype the video, subscribe. That means the world to me. Thank you guys for being awesome. And I will see you in next week's episode of Code with Josh. Until then, Python crew, I will see you then.